Hello there, my name is Ismas, and today let's break down uh, how I did this animation here, uh, the AI simulation effect in Blender 2.82, and uh, just talk about how I set up the materials, lighting, and everything. Uh, let me just maybe play for you the the rendered animation. You can see we have some code uh, doing whatever it's doing. Uh, we have some tracking markers on the guy. I have the shading here, and yeah, everything else. So let's start with uh, the shading on the guy and uh, maybe talk about the other things later. So I'm just going to isolate him for a second. And uh, you can see how he looks. So how I set him up uh, is that uh, I use, uh, if you go under Shift A input, uh, you have layer weight. Uh, this gives you a node uh, that can uh, let you render a lighting effect uh, that de depends on uh, the direction of uh, the, air, the the camera or that depends on the orientation of the camera the view angle of the camera so you can see that uh, depending on where i'm looking at him there's always this directional light uh, facing me so if i add a car ramps just to boost uh, this effect And see that uh, it changes depending on my view angle so I colorize that uh, as you can see here I use instead of the car ramp here I used a power a node or a math node with the operation of power so you can see this is what I have then I added the power node uh, to kind of pro uh, make that effect more pronounced and I colorize uh, that effect to give it some bit of color uh, using the car ramp and uh, hue, such, hue and saturation just to control how bright uh, the effect is, uh, fed, fed that into the emission. And you can see if I change the value here, I can change how bright or I can control how the brightness of that effect. So I want it to be around 0.1 so that it doesn't overpower everything else. And I also used the same effect to create an alpha map, an alpha mask uh, for him. So that you can see that uh, we can see through him and see the different things in the background. I thought this would sell the effect a little bit more, uh, so that's why you see me using that as a mask. I had to invert this uh, so that the black areas are transparent and the white areas are more opaque. Is it that way? Hmm. Oh, I, I think it's the other way around, but uh, yeah, you get the point, I guess. I can see so we have him transparent and we can see the inside parts uh, which sells the effect a little bit better and uh, then I added uh, the skull again because this is transparent uh, we can easily see the inside of the skull which is all rigged up uh, to this armature that I admitted a bit just to make the effect a little bit more interesting and uh, the shader for the for the skull is just very simple. I gave it a metallic shader uh, with uh, some bit of roughness, and uh, that was it. Again, they're all connected to the rig. Uh, that is animated, and uh, just to sell the effect a bit more. Now let's go to let's go to this grid here. Uh, this weird uh, thing here. Ah, uh, you can see for it as well. Whenever you change the view angle, you can see the transparent areas change as well. You can see here is a transparent. Now, if we change uh, the view angle, this becomes less transparent. Again, it's using the same principle uh, for the same shader that I created for the guy, uh, but uh, with a, a few different effects. So the first thing I did before I even before we even talk about the shader is that uh, this is simply a plane with a few subdivisions, and then I added a displacement modifier uh, to it and then to have the animation I added uh, I created an empty object this empty and uh, whenever you have in the whenever you have a displacement modifier uh, the default setting is set to local uh, which means that it's using the coordinates of the object itself but uh, if you change it to object and select another object whenever you move that object it changes uh, the displacement. So I animated this empty and made it the target object for uh, for the texture coordinates. And I uh, can see we have that set of movement. And uh, this is the same 
thing for the three uh, displacements we have uh, to create those effects there. You can see them there. So now let's talk about uh, the materials uh, for a second here. Uh, so for the materials, uh, there is this node. Let me just do this for you from scratch. I'll just remove this wire, this material, and then create it from scratch. So there is a node called wireframe. So sh if you do shift A input wireframe, you can see that node, you can access that node. And uh, if we preview this node, control shift and click that node, you can see we get, we see uh, the actual wireframe of uh, the mesh. So what I did was use this as the alpha map, as the alpha mask and the emission mask for this, uh, for this object. So if I connect this uh, to the alpha and the emission, and the base color, preview this. We're not seeing uh, much, we're seeing the emission, but uh, we're not seeing the transparency because if you're using, if you're rendering using EV, you have to set that up in the material settings uh, so that the blend mode is set to alpha instead of a blend, alpha blend instead of opaque. So click on that and uh, you can see, we see our grid. But I did want the entire grid to show because it didn't look as good as I wanted it to. Uh, so what I did, I used the fractional shader or the layer weight shader we used on this guy. I uh, saw so input uh, layer weight uh, so that whenever the camera view changes, uh, the alpha map also changes. So, and uh, the way I did that is that uh, if you look at the fractional shader, you can see right now it's too bright, but I can already see, and uh, that's because I have the bloom turned on, but uh, you can see how the mask is changing as the view angle is changing. So to make that more pronounced, I can just add a car ramp or a convert math node and change the operation to power. And you can see now I have a more contrasted uh, view. And uh, we're seeing a few issues here. And that's because sometimes if you're rendering using EV, uh, you might want to turn off showback screen uh, so that you don't get uh, those show back face uh, so that you don't see those back faces and uh, to have those weird shading. Now you can also play with the blending mode to increase the blend here to, to increase uh, the mask, the shape of the mask. And uh, I used this mask uh, to cut out some of those wireframes. So for that, I added a convert math node. I uh, have this as value one and this as value two. And if I play, if I change that, you can see we are getting that. But uh, I want these areas to have no grids and uh, actually I want the inverse of that. So let's try multiply. And you can see uh, this is the exact mask we want. So we want only the, uh, the grids to show in some areas and uh, also only when the camera, when the camera moves, I want the mask to, to change as well. And uh, remember, because we have this displacement modifier. We also have, we also get that bit of animation in our, in our displacement. And then we can use this as uh, the emission, but I also wanted to have some bit of color. So I added a convert color ramp. Uh, so set this to a blue color like that. But uh, because it's, it's not too bright enough, uh, so I added a hue and saturation node, color, hue and saturation, so that I have control over the uh, the emission value. Uh, because if you connect this to the emission, you lose uh, the, the control over the color here. So I just added that to have some bit of control. So I'm setting the value to five and then connecting that to the emission. And uh, we want this to be our new mask. So I'll connect, I'll replace the old mask with this. And uh, if we preview this node now, you can see what we are looking at. And uh, now I can I guess use this as the base color as well. Turn on bloom again. And you can see how I made uh, the grid. 
so that was the grid uh, so I just duplicated it a few times I uh, put one on the floor and put two on the back side and uh, then the the other thing I did if you look closely you see these point clouds uh, that I think looked awesome so let me just play this from my rendered animation you can see those point clouds uh, that are kind of connected uh, to the grid and uh, they're also moving uh, the way I did those those is the uh, after I made the grid so I just borrow this grid after I made the grid I added let me just do shift s I added an icosphere it doesn't have to be an icosphere you can use any type of object and reduce the subdivisions because I wanted many of them and I don't want it I didn't want to slow down my PC I gave them an emission shader like that parented them uh, to the grid control P parented the icosphere to the grid control P and uh, because uh, if you select the the grid and go to the I think it's data I think this is object data properties and uh, under uh, instancing is under instance is it oh it's actually under object properties not object data properties it's under object properties uh there is an option for instancing and uh, by default it's set to none but uh, if you set instance if you set to what says uh what will happen is that uh, the par all parented objects to this grid will be instanced on every single vertex you have so if I say, if say I have a monkey head like this and parented this to uh, the grid and uh, again turn on uh, vertex, vertex instancing, you can see that uh, it will make duplicate so that on every uh, vertex we have on this. Uh, but I don't want uh, that monkey head so let me first remove that. And uh, basically that's how I did that. And you can see uh, they are too far from the grid so what I did is uh, move if you move the object the original object uh, those grids those duplicates also move uh, but uh, if you move it to this center of origin uh, for the parent group for the parent object it will snap it will move all the vertices all the duplicates to their corresponding vertices so if I scale this down the original uh, object down can see they also scale down and uh, whenever the grid moves they also move so if we preview this you can see basically that's how I got that effect okay what else yes yeah, so let's talk about these are uh, the code the code itself so the code is also quite easy I just added a plane like this and uh, UV unwrapped it, added a new material, and uh, added a texture, a, uh, a code texture. Let me see if I can find uh, something like that. Now, if we preview this, you can see how it looks. And uh, it's a bit stretching, so I'll just scale that up a bit. So I used this image as a, an alpha mask and also an emission uh, mask uh, for uh, this. So uh, to use it to use it as an alpha mask because it's black and white. It's not black and white. It's colored. Uh, if you just feed this directly into the alpha map, to the alpha input, let's preview this material. And remember, when you're using EV, you have to set uh, the blending mode here to, bl uh, to blend alpha can see how this looks but uh, because it's not fully black and white we are still getting a few areas that are not fully uh, transparent so what I did let me first preview this I added a convert mark node and changed the operation I think to greater than yeah that will give you a completely black and white image and fed that into our alpha mask you can see now we have a transparent transparent code now I also wanted it to be emissive uh, to produce color so I added a convert color ramp to colorize that let me 
is actually this is supposed to be black and uh, this is supposed to be the color you can see again you can increase the value here something like five to make it brighter I think that is a bit too harsh and uh, this is supposed to, let's try three yeah and uh, basically that's how you get uh, the code to work uh, so then for the animation uh, that's very easy you just have to add texture coordinate mapping for this and animate those so control t control t to add the texture coordinates uh, but that only works if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled so make sure you do that and uh, now we can animate uh, the z location i think uh, actually it's the y location so if i add a keyframe select that node hit record hit i and uh, maybe at around that move that you can see we have that but uh, it's going the wrong direction so i'll just flip these around uh, these keyframes around to get something like that but uh, i don't like how fluid uh, the motion is if you look at uh, my original uh, version you can see how the code is moving in a more jagged way and uh, that is more realistic to how someone in, who is hacking the system would uh, if something was hacking the system and uh, that's the kind of code you expect to see instead of this fluid sc scrolling uh, that is happening here so to get that kind of jagged uh, movement or animation uh, what i did is went into the curve editor i'm using control tab to go to switch between that uh, to switch between the timeline and the curve editor and I just make sure you have the node you want to animate selected uh, to access these keyframes and uh, what you want to do let me first select everything and zoom in into the keyframes you can see how the keyframes look the first thing you want to do is change this into a vector i don't think that is actually necessary but uh, what you want to do is uh, go under modifiers here and add a step interpolation modifier if you look closely now i actually think it might only work if you have uh these uh, spline types uh these uh these handle types set to split to vector instead of bezier so if you select everything using a and then hit v uh, you can change this to vector and you can start seeing i think uh the steps so let's see if we are actually seeing any of that let me just make sure i'm selecting the right coordinate uh, so yeah sorry about that uh you need to also you need to first select the uh, the value you want to have uh, the modifiers on because you can see that uh, i applied uh, the step modifier on the wrong axis i applied that on the x-axis that's why it wasn't working so let me first remove that go to the y value maybe let me hide everything else except, except the y value zoom in on that and add the step modifier you can see uh, the steps and you can see how the code now is being animated you can even play with the step size to get a better if to get that effect yeah so that's how you get that effect there and uh, uh, the trackings are very easy i just made actually let me just show you because i'm not going to go through making them it's just a plane uh, that is extruded just edited and uh you can see how that looks and basically parented to the bones at follow to to follow like it's uh, tracking the object so that's how i did that uh, thank you for watching i'll see you in the next tutorial the project will be up on my patreon page so if you're a patreon you can download it for free uh, thank you for watching.